The Sunday Morning Slasher Carl Eugene Watts This information is coming from Murderpedia Read by Old Drunkie Carl Eugene Watts Born November 7th, 1953 Also known as the nickname Coral Was an American killer Dubbed the Sunday Morning Slasher Watts is now suspect to have killed more than a hundred women, which would make him the most prolific serial killer in American history. He obtained immunity for a dozen murders as a result of a plea bargain with prosecutors in 1982. At one point, it appeared that he could be released in 2006. He died of prostate cancer while serving two sentences of life without parole in Michigan, prison. Carl Eugene Watts was born in Killeen, Texas to Richard Eugene Watts and Dorothy May Young. His father was a private first class in the army and his mother was a kindergarten teacher. When Watts was less than two years of age, his parents separated and he was raised by his mother. Watts and his mother moved to Inkster, Michigan and in 1962 Dorothy May married a mechanic named Norman Caesar, with whom she had two daughters. As a child, Watts described being strange. Around the age of 12, Watts claimed that this was when he started to fantasize about torturing and killing girls and young women. During adolescence, Watts began to stalk girls and is believed to have killed his first victim before the age of 15. When Watts was 13, he was infected with meningitis, which caused him to be held back in the 8th grade. Upon his return to school, Watts had difficulty keeping up with other students. At school, he would often receive failing grades and was reading at a 3rd grade level by the age of 16. He also suffered severe bullying at school. I'm sure we can all relate to that. I'm sure that didn't exacerbate his need to hurt other human beings. On June 29, 1969, Watts was arrested for sexually assaulting 26-year-old Joan Gave. When Watts was tried, he was sentenced to the Lafayette Clinic, a mental health hospital in Detroit. According to the psychiatrist assessment, Watts was revealed to suffer from mild mental retardation with a full-scale IQ of 68 and to have a delusional thought process, though a police officer interrogating Watts after his arrest later stated that he appeared to be very, very intelligent. (laughs) I can sometimes sound like I'm smart too, but ain't nobody giving me no Nobel Prize. With an excellent memory, he was released from Lafayette Clinic on November 1969. Despite his poor grades, Watts graduated from high school in 1973 and received a football scholarship to Lane College in Jackson, Tennessee. You hear that, everybody? You need an IQ of 79 to graduate high school. Stay in school, kids. You'll you'll figure it out. (laughs) He was expelled from Lane College. Oh, well. (laughs) Apparently that IQ won't make you through college, though. He was expelled from Lane College after only three months because he was accused of stalking and assaulting women. Okay, (laughs) you can be dumb, just don't be a fucking creepy, well, I mean, obviously, don't be this guy, but anyway, uh, what was I doing? Another reason he was expelled was because many people at Lane College believed Watts was a suspect in a brutal murder of a female student. However there was not enough evidence to convict him of the murder after his expulsion. He moved to Houston, Texas. Watts' career as a serial killer began when he was 20 years old in 1974 by kidnapping his victims from their homes, torturing them, and then murdering them. On October 30th, 1974, Watts tortured and brutally murdered 20-year-old Gloria Stilley. Steel? Stille? I'm gonna go with Steel. Who was believed to be his second victim. Watts, who was African American, almost always killed young white women. Watts killed females between the ages of 14 and 44 using methods such as strangulation, stabbing, 
bludgeoning, and drowning. Watts had murdered dozens of women between 1974 and 1982, and despite the many women he murdered, Watts was not discovered as a serial killer for almost eight years. There were several reasons for this. He attacked in several different jurisdictions and even different states. Even with the advent of DNA testing, it was still nearly impossible because he rarely performed sexual acts on the victim, unlike most serial killers of women and girls. And his crimes were not thought to be sexually motivated. Watts was also not suspected to be involved in any of the murders by people who knew him, and was not a police suspect in any of the murders until his arrest in 1982. On May 23, 1982, Watts was arrested for breaking into the home of two young women in Houston and attempting to kill them. While in custody, police began to link Watts with the recent murders of a number of women. Until 1981, he had lived in Michigan, where authorities suspected him of being responsible for the murders of at least 10 women. Damn. This is... I feel like if police suspect you for something like that, like, they're gonna, like... I mean, I don't know. Maybe the, uh, Maybe Michigan police are different than the police here in Texas. But I feel like the I feel like if they suspect you of one murder, you're gonna be like, they're just gonna be parked outside your house, it's just fucking forever. <laughs> Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I'm not a cop. And I don't know how that stuff works. Anyway, Watts was previously questioned about the murders in 1975, but there had not been enough evidence to convict him. At that time, Watts had spent a year in prison for attacking a woman who survived. A year. Uh, yeah, the, that you can tell that didn't happen in Texas. Like, we, <laughs> just take them out back and give them the old yeller. <laughs> okay, prosecutors in Texas did not feel they had enough evidence to convict Watts of murder. So, in 1982, they arranged a plea bargain. If Watts gave full details and confessions to his crimes, they would give him immunity from the murder charges, and he would instead face just charges of burglary with the intent to murder. This charge carried a 60-year sentence. He agreed with the deal and promptly confessed in detail to 12 murders in Texas. However, Michigan authorities refused to go in on the deal, so the case in that state remained open. Watts later claimed that he had killed 40 women, and has also implied that there were more than 80 victims in total. He would not confess outright to having committed these murders, however, because he did not want to be seen as a mass murderer, police still considered Watts a suspect of 90 unsolved murders. Watts was sentenced to the agreed 60 years, however, shortly after he began serving time, the Texas Court of Appeals ruled that he had not been informed that the bathtub and water he attempted to drown Lori Lister in was considered a deadly weapon. The ruling reclassified him as a nonviolent felon, making him eligible for an early release. That is weird. <laughs> the judicial system is weird. <laughs> anyway. At the time, Texas law allowed nonviolent felons to have three days deducted from their sentence for every one day served. What the fuck? <laughs> I'm going to read that again. At the time, Texas law allowed nonviolent felons to have three days deducted from their sentences for every one day served as long as they were well, well behaved. <laughs> that's, that's weird, bro. This dude is like fucking violent murderer and shit, and they're just like, ah, he's an okay guy. What the fuck, dude? <laughs> okay. Watts was a model prisoner and had enough time deducted from his sentence that he could have been released as early as May 9th, 2006. The law allowing early release was abolished after public outcry, understandably, but could not be appealed retroactively according to the Texas Constitution. Hmm. Huh. Okay. 
Uh, that's uh, whatever. I mean, spoilers. He's he's dead. He died before he could get released. So yeah, <laughs> justice was served in that way. In 2004, Michigan Attorney General Mike Cox went on national TV asking for anyone to come forward with information in order to try and convict Watts of murder to ensure he was not released. Joseph Foy of Westland, Michigan came forward to say that he had seen a man fitting Watts' description murder Helen Dutchler. That's information you should have said a long time ago, bro. Is <laughs> she... A 36-year-old woman who died after being stabbed 12 times in December 1979. It took this cat... What? It took this cat 30 years to bring this up? It's pretty important information. Someone check his brain. Four identified Watts by his eyes, which he described as being evil. Okay, that, maybe that's why. They, he probably said something and they didn't listen to him. They were like, oh, this guy's dumb. Described his eyes as being evil and devoid of emotion. Although Watts had immunity from persecution for the 12 killings he had admitted to in Texas, he had no immunity agreement in Michigan. Before his 2004 trial, law enforcement officials asked the trial judge to allow the Texas confessions into evidence which he agreed to. Good for him. Good job, Judgey. Watts was promptly charged with the murder of Helen Dutcher. A Michigan jury convicted him on November 17, 2004, after hearing eyewitness testimony by Joseph Foy. To be, uh, I mean, I'm, I'm with it, but to be fair, like, this testimony is 30 years old. That's kind of weird. This entire case is weird. On December 7th, he was sentenced to life imprisonment. Two days later, authorities in Michigan started making moves to try him for the murder of Western Michigan University student Gloria Steele, who was stabbed to death in 1974. Walt's trial for the Steele murder began in Kalamazoo, Michigan on July 25, 2007. Closing arguments concluded July 26. The following day, the jury returned a guilty verdict Watts was sentenced to life imprisonment without parole on September 13th. He was incarcerated at a maximum security prison in Iowa, Michigan. I don't know. I know. I know. Whatever. Iowa, Michigan. I'm sure that's wrong. Don't care. He died of prostate cancer on September 24th. September, oh, pardon me. September 21st in a Jackson, Michigan hospital. The case is featured in episode of Cold Case Files and True TV series The Investigators. Alright everybody, that case was read off of Murderpedia, which apparently stole that from Wikipedia, so shout out to both of those awesome websites for go ahead and compiling this information so I didn't have to write a script and read this. So, with all that being said, if you guys enjoyed this, check out my other channel, old drunky you will find a lot of my original short stories as well as some public domain works and maybe in the future even some creepypastas from the subreddit and if you guys did like this or want me to go in more detail about this case or other cases just comment down below obviously hit that like subscribe button share this everywhere and help your boy continue making content and doing what he loves to do which is talking into a microphone and telling stories with all that being said Here's to you, and good night. Oh, also, P.S. I have a Patreon. Old Drunky, Patreon.com. Go donate some cash to your boy. Good night.